whenever I try and have a reasonable discussion with anybody about this from from our opposition. They don't want to discuss it. They uh, want to swear at me and call me names. Oregon. Though it doesn't share a border with Mexico or Canada, it shares many of the problems of border states. The state legislature was one of the first in the country to pass a sanctuary law, turning Oregon into a magnet for illegal aliens. The law drives down competitive wages and allows criminals in the country illegally to walk out of jail scot-free. The natural resources of this lush state are being exploited by the open border lobby, but the tide is turning, and the number of those brave enough to oppose the state's sanctuary law are growing. State Representative Sal Esquivel, whose father came from Mexico, is one of the brave. Speaking as an individual that his father was from Mexico and did it right, as long as we harbor people that break the law in this country, then that opens up other opportunities. What laws do we ignore and what laws do we not ignore? We have homeless veterans, we have veterans that need health care, and we have people that need affordable housing desperately and seniors that need help desperately and yet we continue to support people here that do not belong here. And I believe that I fought for a country that was a country of laws, a country of doing what's right. If you don't like a law, you change the law, but you, you adhere to it if it's constitutional. And this law has been in place for many, many years, but it's not being adhered to. In fact, it's being not only not adhered to, it's being ignored, and I resent that. We spoke with Representative Esquivel in Oregon's magnificent state capital in Salem, a city heavily reliant on agriculture, an industry that attracts illegal alien labor. State Representative Greg Barreto says that cheap labor comes at a cost to American workers. In his office, we were joined by Cynthia Kindle, who is leading the grassroots charge to repeal Oregon's sanctuary law. Um, so it's an issue that really needs to be uh, dealt with. And, and really the question is, look, uh, are we going to be a, a nation of laws or not? Are we going to be a state of laws or not? You know, and are we going to uh, um, be opposed to federal government laws when the federal government is in charge of these issues like immigration? No, I think I think it uh, it, it continues to build uh, a, uh, a disconnect. People say, well, if they're just here, um, if their only crime is being in the country illegally, that's if they're that's their only crime. The only way that they could just be committing that crime as if they just stepped over the border and stood there. Uh, if they did anything else, if they traveled about, if they uh, got a car, if they got a job, if they got um, an ID, a, a forged ID, fraudulent, they buy social security numbers. Um, you know, it's not a big deal to a lot of people unless it's yours. Cynthia has an unyielding passion to restore the rule of law in Oregon. Her time is split between being a loving and caring mother and activism lobbying lawmakers and people on the street to sign a petition to stop Oregon's sanctuary policies. This is democracy in action. And we're fortunate in Oregon to have the right to a citizen's veto referendum to turn over um, legislation or laws that were passed that we don't like, and also to um, have the right to initiative petition, which is what we're doing now, is to repeal a law that we or a statute that we don't like. Um, hopefully the voters will agree with us, but it it doesn't get done unless activists do it. And so we're lucky enough to have that in Oregon. A lot of states don't have that privilege. And so we're taking advantage of it. And it's as simple as that. And again, you don't have to be politically involved. You don't have to be an activist. You don't have to carry a sign to say, you know what, I don't like the idea of, being, of Oregon being a sanctuary state. And I would like to have the chance to vote on that. Cynthia, like so many who are bold enough to fight against the open border money machine, has been the victim of some brutal attacks, death threats, threats against her family. But despite the tremendous personal sacrifice, Cynthia still fights on. My husband and my sons are, are very concerned about me and we take all kinds of safety precautions. Um, I just feel like we're on the side of right and we are representing the majority of Oregonians that agree with us. And if somebody doesn't stand up and say, no, this is wrong, then um, we have a lot to lose. And so I guess the, the, 
the decision is who who wins who wants this more do we want to allow people to come into our country um, access our entitlement programs our schools our benefits um, or do we want to preserve our sovereignty as a sovereign nation um, somebody has to stand up and do it